Coming to you from the third floor of the Rhode Island State House, my name is Dave Barber in a segment we call Capital Spotlight. We like to take a couple of minutes and talk to a member of the General Assembly about some of the legislation they've been working on and how it might impact you, the Rhode Island citizen. We do it right before session. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome a gentleman that we've had the good fortune of interviewing before. Uh, it is my distinct honor to welcome back the Honorable State Representative Jared Newens. Representative, it's good to see you, sir. It's good to see you too, Dave. Thanks for having me here and thanks to your listeners for tuning in. Well, well listen, I know one of the things that you've been working on uh, centers around reimbursing cities and towns um, with the automobile excise tax. Uh, bring our viewers up to speed on that legislation. What does it involve? All right. Uh, well, back in 2010, when they removed the automobile excise from reimbursement from the cities and towns, and everybody felt the effects of that, every city and town in the state did. Uh, but it was said in statute that cities and towns would be reimbursed at a certain rate, which ended up being whatever tax rate they were they were applying to the automobile tax at that time, which means that cities like Providence and Central Falls are getting greater than their share. So what my piece of legislation does is it it changes the reimbursement scheme so that it applies it payments to the cities and towns based upon the total value of vehicles in each community. So if you have $10 million worth of cars, you receive uh, that percentage of, of reimbursement for that amount in your uh, municipality. And it just so happens that the two municipalities that I represent are, are getting less than, than we should be getting on, uh, based upon that scheme. You know, uh, it's a controversial uh, tax to begin with. A lot of people suggest uh, that the methodology is a little unfair. The evaluation uh, method's a little unfair. In fact, uh, one of your colleagues has some legislation dealing with that in the, uh, the Rhode Island House. It, it seems to be a contentious situation uh, under the best of circumstances. You're, you're absolutely right, Dave. And believe me, if I'm in favor of repealing the tax as a whole. If, if we could do that, that would be great. And I know there's other legislators out there that are focusing more on the way that cars are evaluated, but that's more of a red herring type of argument because the, if they evaluate your car for less, they're going to increase the tax rate that you're paying. So you're still going to be paying the same amount. All I'm saying is that the way the state re reimburses the cities and towns is not fair to cities and towns. Like, take West Warwick, for instance. West Warwick is a distressed community. There's no reason we should be getting less than the city of Providence does based on a per car basis or a per assessed value basis. There's no reason that they should be getting more than us just because their automobile tax rate was higher back when they when, when they changed the uh, reimbursement. L let's talk also about something that you're working on that Massachusetts has done with the uh, manufacturing of beer and wine locally here in Rhode Island. You have some legislation that deals with that. Tell us about it. Right. Well, the legislation is very similar to the legislation I put in last year, which would allow locally produced beer and wine to be sold at farmers markets. Now, this is currently allowed in Massachusetts, it's allowed in Connecticut, it was passed in New York. So it's it's a trend that's that's crossing the, the Northeast and it's a proven job creator in Massachusetts. It has created hundreds of jobs and it, it really has allowed these small niche breweries and wineries to, to expand immensely. And that's the reason I put it in was was solely to create jobs. I mean, that until we get serious about creating jobs here, we're, we're just spinning our wheels. It, and it's become kind of an in thing. I mean, uh, people like the fact that they could buy a beer or wine that was made right here in the state. And I got to believe that it would help agriculture. Abs you're absolutely right, David. It, it supports the local agricultural economy. It supports local business people. It's, it, there's no reason to, to, to not support the bill, but it, it does have some some uh, opposition from the liquor distributors and some liquor stores, not, not many liquor stores, most liquor stores are for it, but mostly the liquor distributors because they feel as though any alcohol that's sold in the state should go through them, which is, I, I don't think that's, that's right. Well, I think you're, you're right on point by saying this trend has happened in other parts of the country and it's become 
very, very popular. I wish you the very best on that, and I want to thank you for taking time in speaking with us today. Thanks for having me again, Dave. And of course, we could not do it without you, the viewer. Thank you so much for tuning in. Capital Spotlight, my name is Dave Barber.